The Edmonton Oilers find them in a very precarious place. Stuart Skinner, Jack Campbell have just not been very good for the Oilers. Now, is it all on them? Absolutely not. Some of the defensive play in front of them have been terrible. But when you have back-to-back performances from both goalies of 750 save percentage, even in the same game, both goalies making 12 saves against 16 shots, it's um, it's not looking pretty. The Oilers are built right now with Dry Saddle and McDavid, with Evander Kane, with Hyman, Nugent Hopkins. They have a plenty. They have a plethora of talent up front, but not as much on the back end. Now they, I like the addition of Ekholm, but do you believe Darnell Nurse is a nine point two five million dollar defenseman? Personally, I don't. But I really like the Ekholm when they traded for him and acquired him from Nashville. I do think, you know, Nurse is a solid in the top four, even though he's overpaid. Evan Bouchard looks like a promising young defenseman. But defensively, I feel like they need to add another piece. I just don't think there's enough talent on the back end right now for them to be good enough to be a Stanley Cup champion. Yeah, you can score all the goals you want in the regular season, but it does come down to your defense and your goaltending. And this is another thing here. The goaltending's been terrible. It has. It hasn't been very good. There's a lot of issues regarding them making the save they need to make. Defense hasn't been great, but still the goalies are just not good. Jack Campbell has been terrible since he put on the Oilers sweater. Stuart Skinner was far better than Jack Campbell last season. And for the Oilers, that's not a good thing. Skinner, you know, about an average NHL starter, but at times due to his youth, left you wanting a bit more. And Jack Campbell, to be fair to him, in the game that he played in the playoffs, looked pretty steady, but they went right back to Skinner, even though he was he was struggling mightily. I, I'm just not sure right now. The Oilers are good enough on the back end or in goal to really be a threat to win a Stanley Cup. Connor McDavid's the greatest player in the world. Leon Draisaitl's top three. Some people say two, some people say three. They have superstars up front, but it just feels like the team around them is just not constructed in the proper manner. So... I really kind of wanted to dive into, you know, possible destinations that, or I would say possible teams that the Oilers could talk to, to maybe have a trade workout. So, you know, let's just look at this Edmonton Oilers team and kind of go from there. Very top heavy, Kane, Drysaddle, McDavid, uh, Ogle, Newton, Hopkins, Hyman, a very solid top six. Uh, McLeod, Connor Brown, Holloway, or like I think okay enough bottom six. They, they get their scoring from their top six. And that's a kind of another point of contention that, you know, I, I don't know due to these massive contracts, if they have enough talent spread out throughout their roster, even up front. Defense, you got Ekholm and Bouchard. That pairings looked, I felt, you know, I know it's been a rough start to the first, uh, you know, for first bit here, but. I think Ekholm and Bouchard will be fine. You have a veteran guy that's considered one of the better defensemen in the league with a young, promising guy. Yeah, I think that's a good pairing. Bouchard's been a workhorse for the Oilers this season. But then you have Nurse and Cody Ceci. I mean, Nurse, I, I agree. I don't think is that guy. But Cody Ceci, I mean, in a top four, maybe he's the fourth. I think ideally probably more in like a fifth guy in the rotation. But I, the bottom pairing, you're just unsure about as well. Not saying they don't have, you know, good qualities, good attributes, but you're just, you're not sure. Uh, the goaltending, Jack Campbell and Stuart Skinners. I know it's early, but I mean, Campbell is an 889 goals against average and a 750 save percentage in one game. Stuart Skinner has a 533 goals against average and a 750 save percentage in two games. And, you know, it's just inexcusable. You need better. You need better goaltending. So let's look at some teams. Now, there ha- there has been some rumors of Holland maybe talking to the Boston Bruins. And 
that would be the most intelligent thing to do. If you are, all these ads, please stop. If you are the Edmonton Oilers, who has the best tandem in the NHL? The Boston Bruins. They have Olmark and Swayman. Both who are good starter level goalies for any team in the NHL. Not saying they're the best individually in the NHL, but as a tandem, they're the best. So for me, when I look at them, I'm like, all right, I'm going to call them. I mean, Olmark, great start. Swayman, great start to the season. Like, is Olmark available? Is, you know, is Swayman available? Now, if I'm the Bruins, I retain the younger guy. But that's that's a thing you could argue. Like, hey, should you call the Boston Bruins? But I would counter, who would the Oilers give up to get him? That's the honest conversation here. Because I don't think Nugent Hopkins is the offensive producer he is last season. I don't think that's him by himself. If he comes to Boston, like if Nugent Hopkins was on the Boston Ruins last season, yeah, they had a historic team. His numbers would have took a dip. When you're playing with some of the best players in the world, your numbers get inflated quite a bit. We've seen that in time, like in the past, where players that are on really good situation change teams. And not saying their line mates are bad, but they don't have the same amount of production because, yeah, you're not cooking with the same sauce. A little bit different. And if I'm the Bruins, I don't think Nugent Hopkins pushes the table there for me personally i know some fans are big nugent hopkins fans and, and i can understand that to a degree but when i look at nuge i look at a very you know a quality player middle six guy in, in a regular situation i don't know if he'll produce the same numbers elsewhere now i could be completely wrong i mean he was drafted first overall in 2011 when, uh, i could be wrong in that assessment maybe but i just i I'm more along the lines that I think Nugent Hopkins is just a product of the situation that he's in. So for me, it's like, well, if I'm going to be trading for somebody and all the fans are going to be pissed when I say this because it will never happen, but I'd be like a dry saddle. And I'm not saying a one for one. Like if I'm trading Olmark, I'm like, I'll trade Olmark some higher end draft capital for a guy like a dry saddle. Now, do I think that happens? (laughs) No, but if I'm trading top five goalie in the NHL, solving your situation, essentially, um, I'm looking to get a return on that. But I would argue, I don't... You put Olmark with the Oilers, it will be better. It will be better, but I, I think there's still going to be... He's not going to have the same numbers in an Oilers sweater just due to the defense around him. So, okay, you talked about Boston, all right? Team that, hey possibly has one of the best tandems in the league right now so who else could you really reach out to and be like well what do you got here carolina hurricanes if i'm the edmonton oilers i'm at least giving a call like hey you know that young kid you have kochetkov he's down in your system kind of like your third goalie some people view that he could be ready right now to be i I believe in kochetkov personally maybe you give him a ring like hey want to possibly deal Kochetkov off? Now, I don't think the Canes do that because they have Ranta and Anderson who are both 34 years old. They're going to gonna keep the young goalie. But hell, call about Anderson. Call about Ranta. Would you be interested in maybe trading him? Maybe doing some type of a deal where, you know, we trade off Campbell. And I'd have to look at the cap, but maybe trade off Campbell, retain some cap, or like make this cap work in some shape or form where you trade for Ronto or Anderson because the Canes do have the benefit of having some pretty damn good depth in the goaltending position. But you're going to have to make that deal sweet for the Canes. Like the Canes are probably going to like look for, you know, a very solid top six guy, you know, kind of increase their scoring because the Canes have terrific defense. But if you could add another like quality forward that puts you like just a little bit extra depth, I mean, if I'm the Canes, I'd do it. All right, so... Carolina is a possible destination. Where else do you look? Other team here, would you possibly look? Now, with the Flyers, this is more of a... This would be more of a shot in the dark type situation. Can you maybe trade for Carter Hart? 
Maybe put him in a different situation. He's still young, only 25 years old. He traded for Carter Hart, had all that promise. RFA at the end of the season. Maybe trade for Carter Hart. If you don't believe, you know, if you're a Flyers fan, you're kind of like, yeah, he's not going to come back or doesn't want to be here. Maybe you trade him for some, some pieces. All right, so Carter Hart, maybe, possibly. In Florida, I could have talked about Spencer Knight. I just don't think he's going to be moved. I think eventually he'll be back at the back. I don't think that's a real conversation, especially with... Um, I think their plan in place is he will eventually take over for Bobrovsky. But okay. All right. All right. Okay. Now, I know this isn't the Western Conference. I know it's young. Peter Barazic, uh, he's done pretty solid thus far in the early season. I, know it's, I think it's one start. Or is it two? It's, uh, no, it's two. He's, he's looked pretty good. Two games. So that's right. So they, they both split it. Soderblom and Mrazek look good. Soderblom's a young guy. Maybe you call about Mrazek being like, hey, is he available? Now, I'll add another caveat here. It is young in the season. I don't think a lot of these guys have sustained the level of protection they're giving. But right now, if you're an Oilers fan, you're probably like, man, I, I want you guys to do something. The one team that I thought should have been all in, and it probably wouldn't have happened due to being in Canada and like same conference if I was the Edmonton Oilers, I would have done everything in my power to get that boy, Connor Hellebuck. I know it's a rough start to the season, but Connor Hellebuck's one of the best goalies in the NHL. Connor Hellebuck on the Oilers would have been disgusting. Now, do I think he would have struggled a little bit behind that defense? Yes. But maybe you make a trade where you get, you know, acquire a defensive piece. I don't know, but... There's, there is options out here. The more realistic ones, if I'm, I'm going to say right now realistic, um, I think Boston has an outside chance of being realistic depending, de depending the return on investment there. Uh, another team that I think possibly Carolina, that could make some sense for them. They have three goalies in the organization. They're paying Kochetkov mil millions of dollars to be for the, you know, down, uh, down in the A. Marazic, if I'm the Oilers, I'm like, I'm not as high on him because he can be up and down. But, you know, when he's on, he's on. Another guy that has been rumored to been on the move for years and years and years was John Gibson. And I know, you know, I'm Ducks had a pretty damn good start to the season. Gibson had a pretty, you know, good game. He lost, but, you know, 919 season, 3.05. Gibson's numbers haven't been amazing the past few seasons. But it's been due to being on one of the worst teams in the NHL. The Ducks, I mean, Vitrano had a hat trick in his first game. Vitrano, like, producing. But the Ducks don't, they're not a deep team. And if I'm, I envision the Ducks being more towards the bottom, if not the bottom of their division. I think you, that's the call you make. But the Calgary Flames. That will never happen, but, I mean, do you call on a guy like Markstrom if he keeps struggling? Maybe he changes scenery? I don't know about that. Uh, the San Jose Sharks. The San Jose Sharks would be interesting because right now they're not a good team. On paper, in soul, anything. You know, they're just not a very good team. And I'm not going to overestimate one very good game by Blackwood, right? But... Was it 51 saves on 52 shots against against the Avalanche? A guy who's kind of struggled to stay healthy. So that is something you kind of worry about, but he's always had the potential. It's never really been the talent with Blackwood. It's been the health and him not being able to get into a rhythm due to that. But like this San Jose Sharks team is not going to be a playoff team. And, you know, it's one start, but let's say Blackwood keeps playing well. If you're the Oilers, I know it's in division, but if you're the Oilers, do you like call like, hey, would you possibly move Blackwood? Because Blackwood's relatively cheap cap hit, 2.35. Contract expires in a couple seasons. It allows him to have another guy in there. You know, Campbell has been an absolute travesty. Maybe, maybe if you're the Oilers, you trade Campbell for Blackwood and then the Oilers have to trade, cut like, you know, some other assets to make it happen. That way, they get kind of an NHL caliber goalie with the Sharks, but they're still kind of able to not be great, so they get a higher draft pick. 
Uh, but I mean, to me, I'm interested in any possible solution to this situation. And the last, last one I'll go into, and this won't happen. This won't happen. But if we're doing hypotheticals. We'll do them. The Vegas Golden Knights have a pretty damn good tandem. Do I think they get rid of one of them? No, because Thompson's not a cheap deal. But if you were to offer the Knights something valuable or pretty good in return, maybe they listen. But you look at either Thompson or Hill, I mean, that would solve some of the issues with the Oilers roster. Again, does it happen? No, but it would be kind of fun. Now, when I'm... Like, closing thoughts here. The Oilers' goaltending situa situation is not great. Stuart Skinner can be very hot and cold. Uh, and, and Campbell has been abysmal since he's put on that Oilers sweater. But I don't think it's just the goalies alone. You need to have better defensive structure in front of them. And Ken Holland, he benefited at a time when you were able to kind of build a team a certain way with money that, like, he, you know, he has his pedigree for a reason. But I, I just, I don't, I don't know with Holland if he's the guy that's going to be able to turn this around. Now, hopefully he proves me wrong for Oilers fans' sake. But there's some holes on this roster. And when you look outside the, you know, the top six and three guys on defense, a lot of it's underwhelming. So let's say you go get a goaltender. I think the numbers will improve a little bit. It would have to improve over 750. Uh, but those goalies probably will still have the same situations of being left out to dry, breakaways, uh, wide open one-timers. Until the Oilers solve their defensive woes, they're always going to be that team that makes the playoffs due to their insane amount of talent up front, but will never be able to get past um, a certain level, a certain round due to the lack of talent on the back end and, and lack of talent in net. I'd like to know your thoughts. If the Edmonton Oilers could trade for one goaltender, who would you want it to be? And uh, also, you know, I'll throw this in here. Who else, maybe a defenseman, would you want the Oilers to acquire to make them win, be a better team right now, and possibly a Stanley Cup contender? I'm Captain Paul. I'll see you in the next one.